Hi. Now what we've got here then is our curve C with this parametric equation and we have got to work out using integration the exact value of this area R which is between the lines x equals minus 1 and this point B at 1 0. So if you haven't done this question already I'll give you a moment just to pause the video and uh, you can come back and uh, check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So if we're going to work the area out, start with putting area equals, then in the usual way it's going to be the integral of our curve y integrated with respect to x. Going between these limits for x equals minus 1 to x equals 1. Now the point is we're dealing with a parametric equation and you could if you wanted to try and convert it to Cartesian form but it's not really the best way to do it and I would have thought this would be very difficult anyway because of this 2 to the power t. So there is a way around this. What we do is that we integrate this, we put our y value down, but instead of having dx, we change this to dx by dt, and we introduce dt here. It's as if these two dt's cancel out, just leaving us with y dx. But we're integrating now with respect to t, and we need to change our limits. These limits were with respect to x. We're now needing to change them with respect to t. And in order to do this, right, what we need to do is just come down here, give ourselves a little bit of room. Let's say we have that. Then what we've got to do is we say that when x is our bottom limit here, minus 1, just put that down. When x equals minus 1, we can put minus 1 into here and work out what the corresponding value of t is. So we're going to have minus 1 equals 1 minus a half t. And if we add half t to both sides and add 1 to both sides, you end up with therefore half t equals 2. And if we multiply both sides by 2, we end up with therefore t equaling 4. So that's our bottom limit here, 4. Now we do exactly the same for this upper limit when x is 1. So when x is 1, what we have got is 1 minus a half t equals 1. And if we subtract 1 from both sides and add half t to both sides, you get half t equals 0. And so that leads to t equaling 0. So you've got your upper limit there. OK. Now notice how our bottom limit is greater than our upper limit here. Don't swap this round, okay? Just leave it exactly as they come out here. Let the mathematics do the work, okay, in the final answer. So we've got that stage done. Now what we need to do next is to substitute our value for y in, okay? So we've got our integral that's going from 4 to 0 and our y value is now 2 to the power t minus 1 so we've got 2 to the power t minus 1 we multiply it by dx by dt and if we differentiate x with respect to t you're going to get just minus a half so we multiply that by minus a half and we're integrating this with respect to t okay now, if we just clean this up, let's bring the minus a half. Because it's a constant, let's bring it out the front of the integral. So we've got minus a half integrated from 4 to 0 of 2 to the power t minus 1, and that's integrated with respect to t. Okay, so we've set that up. Now it's just a case of integrating this. So Let's carry on down here. We've got therefore the area equals. We've got our constant minus half out the front. Now, what is the integral of 2 to the power t? A constant to the power t. Well, 
we should be familiar with this kind of result. I'll put it up here, okay? If you're integrating a constant, let's say a, to the power x, okay, we've got t here, but this is what you'd normally see in, say, formula books and textbooks. If not, then you're going to have to just remember this result. But uh, a to the power x integrated with respect to x is equal to a to the power x all divided by the natural log of the constant a. OK, I'll leave out the constant of integration plus c, OK, but that's our standard result. And we can apply it then to this particular integral because when we integrate 2 to the power t, it is going to be 2 to the power t divided then by the natural log of 2. Then we've got to integrate minus 1 with respect to t, that's going to be minus t. And we're integrating this then between the limits of 4 and 0. So all we've got to do now is just put our limits through. So we've got minus a half. And in the first instance, when we put 0 through, 2 to the power 0, anything to the power 0 is going to be 1. So you've got 1 divided by the natural log of 2. And then you've got minus 0, so I'll leave that out. And then we subtract what we get when we put 4 through for t. So you're going to have 2 to the power 4, which is 16, divided by the natural log of 2. And then you've got minus 4. And we'll close the square bracket off there. OK, what have we got now? Well, we've got minus a half, and then we've got minus 1 over the natural log of 2, minus 16 over the natural log of 2. Well, that's going to be minus 15 over the natural log of 2. And then we've got minus, minus 4, so that's plus 4. Now, if we multiply through by minus a half to each of these terms, we're going to end up with... 15 over 2 times the natural log of 2. And then minus a half times plus 4, well, that's going to be minus 2. And that's our area. And if you like, you could write square units on the end because it is an area. You're not going to lose marks. I wouldn't have thought if you left something like that off, but uh, it just kind of finishes it off, doesn't it? All right.